So I've done a review in the past of my experience using Graphene OS on the Google Pixel phone. This video will specifically focus on my experience using Graphene OS on the Google Pixel 6. I first want to start with a physical review of the phone, and with that we're going to start with the elephant in the room, and by elephant I mean the sheer size of this phone. So as far as physical size goes, here is the Pixel 6 compared to two other Pixels, which is the Pixel 5a and the Pixel 5. Personally, I think the size of the Pixel 5 was most ideal. It was the easiest to fit in your hand and hold, but honestly, the Pixel 6 just got kind of huge. This isn't even the Pro version, this is just the regular Pixel 6, so the smallest one you can buy, and it's a large phone. So if you do have smaller hands, this might not be a great phone for you. As far as some other physical features that I do like, you can see here that the front-facing camera was moved to the center instead of the left side. I do like the center camera better than the left side camera. To me, it gives a better perspective when you're video chatting, since you're usually looking at the center of the screen, not the left side of the screen. Another big physical change on this phone is that on the back, you now have this bar for the camera. On the previous phones, there was just a small square in the upper left-hand corner. But now with the Pixel 6, you have this large bar that's up there. So the pros and cons of this, the obvious con is that there's a large bar now on the top of the phone. One pro to it is that if you're trying to take it out of your pocket, it's kind of nice to grab onto something to pull it up versus the other phones, you didn't have that. And now the last and biggest physical change in my opinion is the fingerprint reader. So on all previous pixels, the fingerprint reader was on the back of the phone, as you can see here on the 5 and the 5a. On the 6, there is no fingerprint reader on the back. So the fingerprint sensor on the Pixel 6 is built into the screen. If we take a look here, you can see the fingerprint icon that's displayed right there. If you press to the side, you can see how it lights up so it can scan your fingerprint. So what happens is the back of the screen lights up as bright as possible in that spot, and then it scans your fingerprint. So to me, I'm pretty fascinated by the fact they built it into the screen, but it does come with some downsides. The first being is that you need to get your finger just right on the screen for it to read the fingerprint. On the previous Pixel phones, the back fingerprint sensor was pretty forgiving and it was pretty quick. You touch your finger to it and the phone would unlock. On the 6, it's similar. You need to touch your finger to it to unlock it, but it's just not as quick. And I also noticed that if you touch your finger in the wrong orientation, such as sideways or, you know, a different way you might be holding the phone, it doesn't seem to work as well. So I've actually added my thumbprint multiple times in different directions in the settings, and that seems to have helped a lot so I can unlock it in different positions. So at this time, the fingerprint sensor built into the screen is not as functional as the fingerprint sensor on the back, which just works really well works quickly, picks up your fingerprint. The one in the screen has some shortcomings. I do hope that future software updates improve this functionality. I do want to clarify though that the fingerprint sensor functionality is related to Android OS, not to Graphene OS. So even if you're running the stock OS, you would still have these shortcomings. On the plus side, the part of me that appreciates minimalistic design really likes the fingerprint sensor being built into the screen. I also think it's a lot easier to keep clean because all you gotta do is wipe off your screen and the fingerprint sensor is now clean. On the previous versions of the Pixel with the back fingerprint sensor, you kind of had this divot where stuff could get stuck in there, so you had to make sure that was always cleaned out. If you do have a Pixel 6 and you have issues with the fingerprint sensor, one setting I suggest you enable is go into Settings, select Display, scroll all the way down, and enable Increase Touch Sensitivity. So I do have a screen protector on my phone, so that decreases the touch sensitivity a little bit. So increasing this helps with screen protectors, and to me it also seems like it helps with the fingerprint reader. So after installing Graphene OS on the Pixel 6, there were a few oddities that I noticed. I would periodically notice that my phone would just say no signal on it when I was in my home. I would put the phone in airplane mode to try and reconnect to a tower, turn it off airplane mode, and it just wouldn't reconnect. Then all of a sudden I would get signal again, and we were good to go. So after about five days of using Graphene OS on the Pixel 6, this issue was completely gone. I no longer lose signal. So I don't know if it was the phone, if it was Graphene OS, if they were doing maintenance on a tower near my house, but as of this time, that issue is completely gone. Another issue I had is that the Signal app kept crashing on the phone. You would click on it, the app would just close, it wouldn't load, I couldn't do video calls. I tried clearing the cache and storage for the app, but that didn't resolve the issue. What did eventually fix it was reinstalling the app completely. It is worth noting though that I did restore this phone from a Graphene OS backup I took on my Pixel 5a. So it is possible there are some weird settings that carried over. So if you do have any issues with apps, I would say just delete them and reinstall them and you should be good to go. So this next suggestion isn't really specific to the Pixel 6 or Graphene OS. It's just a reminder that if you do use your phone as an alarm, you go into the settings on the clock and you change the silence after to never. So the reason I say this is that by default, the phone is set to silence the alarm after 10 minutes. And one night I stayed up way too late reading random stuff online. The next morning, my alarm silenced after 10 minutes because I slept through it. 
and I woke up late for work. So this is just a reminder to hopefully help you wake up on time. Another issue I noticed was Bluetooth connectivity. Again, I don't think this is related to Graphene OS. I started looking around online and I saw other Pixel 6 users complaining about this, but the specific issue that I noticed was that in my vehicle, I pair my phone with my car so I can listen to music and my car was just not picking up the phone. Sometimes I had to turn off my car to kind of reboot the computer system in the vehicle. I would turn off Bluetooth on the phone and it just wouldn't really pick it up. That connectivity has improved over the last few weeks as updates have come out, but it's still not as good as it was on the Pixel 5a. I checked the Graphene OS change logs and maybe I missed it, but I didn't see anything related to Bluetooth. So I think this is related to the underlying Android OS. Another thing I noticed is that when you go into settings and then select battery, this just closes and doesn't actually open. It only happens sometimes, so I don't know if it has to do with the charge level of the phone or just how it's reading the battery level, but after a couple hours, I go in and try again and it just works. So talking about the battery menu, that leads us into the battery life of the actual phone. So the battery life is not great. I plug it in at night and I unplug it when I wake up in the morning. So I would say I get about a full day's charge out of the battery, not a full 24 hours, more of a full waking hours, which is about 16 hours. So while it is a larger battery in this phone and I was hoping to get a little bit better battery life out of it, I think the larger display impacts that battery life considerably. So there is a setting under the display menu called smooth display. And what you can do with this is enable it to automatically raise the refresh rate from 60 to 90 Hertz for some content. This does increase the battery usage though, so you may want to leave it disabled. I tried it with it enabled and disabled, but I honestly didn't notice much of a difference. So with a new phone comes new hardware, and that means a new camera. So for me on Graphene OS, I installed Gcam Services Provider, which allows you to use the Google Camera official app. So all photos you're about to see were taken with the official Google camera. So essentially it's the same as using the default OS that comes with the phone. You get the same features, you get to use the full capabilities of the camera without actually installing Google services. If you wanna see a more in-depth video, there are other videos on YouTube reviewing just the Pixel 6 camera specifically. So if you are interested in that, go ahead and check those out. So this first photo is just a regular photo taken with the camera. This camera takes really great pictures. You can kind of see just how sharp and crisp this photo is. By default, HDR is enabled for photos and you cannot disable it on the Pixel 6. This camera does a great job getting all the colors of the scene and just really bringing that photo to life. Like other devices, the Google camera also has a portrait mode where it kind of blurs the background and only leaves the subject sharp in the photo. Again, this takes a really great photo. This next feature is kind of interesting. It has a motion stabilization option. So I turned this to high, which means there's a lot of motion. And what I was doing was just shaking the camera around and you kind of see where the picture is changing a bit, but still staying in place. So this would be great if you're doing something like say walking around or you're in a car and you don't want the picture to move much, this will help you get a much more stable shot. The last feature of this camera that always blows me away is night sight. So this first photo is taken without that enabled. You can kind of see it's dark, you can't really see much. This photo is pretty much garbage. When you enable night sight, what it does is take a long exposure photo and is able to capture more light and give you a much better picture. This photo was taken seconds after the first one and you can just see what a massive difference night sight makes. It even did a great job capturing some of the stars in the sky. So one other change I would suggest you make if you're gonna use Gcam on your phone, long press on the application icon, select a little I, select permissions, scroll down to network, and make sure you change this to don't allow. By default, it's set to allow, but this app does not need network access, so we don't want it calling out at all. So go ahead and change it to don't allow and the app will still have full functionality. So overall, I'm impressed with how well Graphene OS did on the Pixel 6. I mentioned in a previous video that the Pixel 6 is completely new hardware, so the fact that developers got it working so well so quickly is pretty impressive. As you heard, there were some minor hiccups that I mentioned, but to me, no deal breakers. So I think the biggest deciding factor when purchasing this phone to run Graphene OS is are you personally okay with the physical size of the Pixel 6. It's a large phone, and if you have smaller hands, then this might not be a great phone for you. In other news, Graphene OS did put out a tweet on February 6th, 2022, that says they're gonna be collaborating with a hardware vendor to get a device produced. So if the Pixel 6 isn't right for you, then maybe it's worth waiting around for a couple months to see what the next update is from Graphene OS. 